Well, I've been working my way through this fascinating book on the life of Lord Radstock and the Russian Awakening by David Fountain. And uh, I've come to the story of uh, Count Brabinsky. Uh, his name was uh, Alexei, Alexei Pavlovich Brabinsky. Uh, the Brabinskys were actually, was a, a manufactured name, named after the village where they lived. The, the original Count Brabinsky was actually the extramarital son of Catherine II. She had an affair with uh, some gentleman and ended up with this child. And uh, after her husband Peter died, her son, who became the emperor, raised his half-brother to the level of a count. And so this was maybe three, four generations before. And, uh, and we come across this particular count, uh, Alexei, rather, Alexei Brabinsky. And I'm going to talk a little bit about his life, quite a remarkable story. But before we do that, let me read to you a few beautiful verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 and following. Paul writes, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. And so when God sought out those whom he would use in rather spectacular ways to bring down the strongholds of the enemy, he very often used those that were weak or disadvantaged. And this has a long history. Gideon, I'm the least in my father's house. My father's house is the least in my tribe. Why are you calling me a mighty man of valor? I'm scared out of my mind. But God used him. And the reason God used him, and not only used him, but whittled his army down to 300 men, was so that no one would dare to say, Gideon did it. God wanted people to know that he was for them, that he was fighting for them, that he was giving them victories, so they would trust him. And this has always been the purpose. And you may have heard the story of the member of the upper class who had been gloriously saved, and he thanked God for the letter M. He said, it's a good thing it doesn't say not any wise, not any mighty, not any noble. It says not many. And so he thanked God that a few of those who were in those categories were also used mightily by the Lord. And we, we've seen this in the life of Lord Radstock, a member of the landed gentry. Many of these uh, brethren in the early days were um, cousins to Queen Victoria, men of influence. The middle name of John Darby was Nelson after Lord Nelson because his uncle was a commanding officer on one of Nelson's ships. And Nelson was the godfather to the little boy when he was born. And these people moved in high society, and yet they condescended to men of low estate. They reached out to ordinary people with the gospel. Well, I want to think with you a little bit about this count. And um, we read the story here that um, Count Brabinski here is called a minister of the interior. Now, in some research that I've done, they called him the Minister of Ways of Communication. <laughs> that didn't mean television and radio. Uh, what they meant was transportation. He was responsible for transportation in the world's largest country, by the way. 
and uh, he revolutionized the railroads. He built um, some of the waterways, the canals that linked uh, various parts of Russia, built harbors and so on. Quite a remarkable story. In any case, initially he was uh, quite atheistic. He had no time for God. Um, and this is what the story says. He was a colossal intellect and had read deeply in German philosophy. Schopenhauer was one of the favorite philosophers of Leo Tolstoy, who we'll find out later was a good friend of Brabinski. His soul had found no satisfaction in these philosophers. During the Crimean War, like Radstock, Brabitsky came to the point of death. He was unconscious for many days. When he came around, his first thought was, if there is a God, he must have some way of revealing himself. He then vowed that he would pray every day, without fail, to the God he did not yet know. It was 20 years later that he met someone who likewise had sought his maker in that same war, but had come into the light of the gospel. Imagine this. This man prays every day for 20 years seeking after God, and then Brabinski's wife invited Lord Radstock to their home for dinner. As was his custom, Radstock took the opportunity to bring up the subject of the gospel and referred to the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brabinski was half amused and half interested, but couldn't escape the point. He excused himself and withdrew to seek a way to answer his guest to his own satisfaction. As he went over all his objections, the truth dawned like a sudden flash of light on his soul. He says, I found that Jesus was the key, the beginning and end of it all. Falling on his knees in prayer, he sought mercy and forgiveness, and knew straight away, that he was forgiven. There was a living God. He had revealed himself in Jesus Christ. His 20-year pilgrimage had come to an end. Now, this is not in the book, but doing my own research, I discovered that um, we read under the vertical power structure <laughs> and authoritarian governments Acting honestly, writes the author, is a rather dangerous strategy. That this honesty becomes synonymous with disloyalty. Because he wasn't willing to go along with Princess Dolgorukova, who was a, f a favorite of the monarch, with her money frauds, he was actually sent away to military detention for a period of time. But the author writes concerning some of the work that he did, he had a significant influence on the process of uh, developing railway transport, uh, seaports, water channels of the Russian Empire. Uh, he developed the procedure for setting up railway societies. Uh, up till that time, there was terrible graft and corruption in so-called building railways private enterprises just made passes of money on them and did a very poor job of it. He established the Interim Statistical Department, which resolved long-standing and important issue of clear and scientific organization of the procedure of collection, processing, verification, and presentation of statistical data. And then uh, one of the things that he did was press for the freeing of the serfs. The serfs, of course, were this large underclass that labored and received virtually no pay. They were next to, to slaves. And uh, he actually went and established five uh, sugar beet farms in the Ukraine 
and freed the serfs and hired them on and paid them and then set up a banking system for these ex-serfs so that they could get loans to buy a little piece of land. And this was radical. This was He did not make a lot of friends in the upper class because of his desire to set these serfs free. Uh, but actually, through this, uh, his family established sugar refining in Russia to the point where they no longer had to import sugar from elsewhere. Anyway, he had a very influential life, and and included in this, we read in from the time he was saved in 1874, he devoted his entire life and wealth to the cause of the gospel until his death 10 years later. Um, he was eager to witness to his newfound savior, and he befriended Leo Tolstoy, had long talks, uh, sometimes uh, all through the night till six in the morning, they would be discussing the scripture. And uh, Tolstoy, of course, one of the most influential writers in history, uh, certainly one of the top uh, influential writers in, in Russia. And um, Tolstoy writes concerning his meetings with Brabinsky. He writes, recently I was visited by Brabinsky. He is a remarkable person and as if on purpose, our conversation turned to religion, as if on purpose. He is an ardent believer, and his words have the same effect on me as did yours. He's writing about Prince Urasov. They provoked an envy of that greatness and peace which you possess. Wow. Wow. A month later, in March of 1876, during this time of his seeking after God, Tolstoy wrote to uh, his aunt, a lady in waiting to the empress, At no time has anyone spoken to me so well about faith than Brabinsky. He cannot be contradicted because he does not set out to prove anything. He merely asserts that he believes and one feels that he is happier than those who do not possess his faith. Moreover, one senses that his happiness of faith cannot be acquired through the intellect, but only through a miracle. He was driven from Russia when they made evangelicalism illegal and uh, ended up dying at Cannes in France some years later. But his whole life from that moment of transformation was given over to publishing Christian literature, uh, teaching the lower class people how to read, starting schools where these ex-serfs could, could learn how to read so they could read the Word of God, the publishing of tens of thousands of Bibles and Gospels that were distributed among the poor, and so while it's true that he was one of those not many, one of those upper class people, uh, he gave himself to what the Lord Jesus said, unto the poor the gospel is preached. How hard is it for a rich man to enter into heaven? And yet God still saves some of those, not many, says the scripture, but there are those who respond in faith to the Lord Jesus. You remember the Lord Jesus told the story about the beggar and the rich man, Lazarus, and, uh, and how Lazarus, the poor man, um, put his trust in the Lord and was taken to Abraham's bosom. But the rich man ended up lost. And when Jesus tells the story, it almost sounds like he's saying, uh, Lazarus had his hell on earth, so now he gets his heaven. And uh, the rich man had his heaven, so now he gets his hell. Uh, during your lifetime, you had your good things, he says, and now you're in hell. And Lazarus was in poverty, and now he has his riches. But, you know, the rich man knew why he was in hell. And he said, go and tell my brothers, and they will repent and not come here. And what Jesus was really saying was this, and this is something that everyone in the West needs to be aware of. 
that the rich man's riches disguised from him his spiritual poverty, whereas the poor man's penury exposed to him his spiritual need. And so this is the the danger of Western society, that with all the material things and the distractions and the pleasures, we are fooled into thinking that we're rich if we have highly flammable green paper. And it insulates us from our deep spiritual need and from the, the gospel calling out to people to realize their penury, their poverty, without the Lord Jesus. So thank God for people like Count Alexei Brabinski and many others like him, secret disciples sometimes. I met a brother who knew some in the house of Saud who are secret disciples of the Lord Jesus. Don't be surprised when you get to heaven that we'll meet some of these people there because God is able from rich to poor from wise to unwise, everyone he loves and everyone he wants to save. And we're so thankful for the memory of people like this who were willing to turn their back on the world and all of its uh, stuff, like Moses, despising uh, the, the wealth of Egypt and choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. May the Lord encourage our hearts to pray for those in positions of authority. People like Saul of Tarsus, the chief persecutor. What if God came in and saved some of the leading atheists in our society? What if he came in and saved the, the leader of Russia or the, leader, the leaders of our own countries? What power there would be in transformation. So, have the faith to believe that God can save these people that seem to be out of reach, out of our reach, but they're not out of reach of the Holy Spirit of God. <laughs>